the research question. Defining and refining a research question could be one of the most difficult parts of putting together a literature review, and in fact of any research project. Both professional researchers and successful student researchers develop research questions. That's because research questions are more than handy tools. They are essential to the research process. A research question defines exactly what you're trying to find out. It will influence most of the steps you take to conduct the research. By defining exactly what the researcher is trying to find out, these questions influence most of the rest of the steps taken to conduct the research. That's true even if the research is not for academic purposes, but for other areas of our lives. For example, if you're seeking information about a health problem in order to learn whether you have anything to worry about, research questions will make it possible for you to more effectively decide whether to seek medical help and how quickly. Or, if you're researching a potential employer, having developed and used research questions will mean you're able to more confidently decide whether to apply for an internship or job there. So the confidence you'll have when making such decisions will come from knowing that the information they're based on was gathered by conscious thought rather than simply serendipity and whim. Defining a research pro question is a process of working from the outside in. You start with the world of all possible topics or with an assigned topic and then narrow down until you've focused your interest enough to be able to tell precisely what you want to find out rather than just having a kind of hazy idea of, of having something that you'd like to write about. Although that's a good place to start. You'll need to narrow your topic in order to do research effectively. Without specific areas of focus, it will be hard to even know where to begin. Ideas about a narrower topic uh, from a kind of a general one uh, can come from anywhere. Uh, often, a narrower topic boils down to deciding what's interesting to you. But one way to get ideas is to read background information, and this is one area where a source like Wikipedia can be helpful. It's wise to do some further background reading about a narrower topic once you have it. Why? Well, first, you probably don't know much about it yet. Second, such reading will help you learn the terms used by professionals and scholars who have studied your narrow topic. These terms will be helpful when you're looking for sources later, so jot them down or otherwise remember them. So those are going to be helpful as you're actually applying a search strategy uh, to databases and catalogs and search engines. So uh, it's important to start uh, thinking about uh, later processes uh, at this earlier stage of, of doing the research. So when it comes to these keywords, uh, if you were going to do research about the treatment for humans with bird flu, um, this background reading would teach you that professionals and scholars usually use the term avian influenza uh, instead of bird flu when they write about it. They also often use H1N1 or H1N9 uh, to identify the strain. So there's a couple of useful things going on here where, um, yes, you're identifying keywords, uh, key terms that you can later use in as you're searching around um, databases and other information sources. Um, but it will also, you, you'll be thinking about, you know, further narrowing, uh, further possible narrowing of your topic. If you're looking at two different strains of flu, um, is your literature review going to cover just one strain maybe? Uh, or um, is there only enough literature uh, actually out there uh, where you really need to write about both strains sort of at the same time. Keeping track of information. So even at this stage of, of putting together your research question based on background reading that you're doing, um, it's important to start keeping track of information uh, right away. Um, this will help to avoid, um, it will help to avoid plagiarism. Um, it will help um, you know, as you're putting together your references, um, if you, you know, if you're, if you if you're losing track of information, not only are you, are you in danger of plagiarism, but you're going to waste time later on, um, going back and trying to recreate, uh, uh, all of the, you know, all of the information that you've, uh, uh, that you've got and the sources that you've got it from. So, um, 
you're going to come across a lot of sources and um, you won't know right away if it's going to prove useful in the long run. So um, there are handy pieces of software out there that can help you to keep track of all your sources. Uh, you can bank them into your own personal library. Uh, and so some of these uh, reference management softwares are uh, EndNote, which we subscribe to at Anyway Galway Library, uh, as well as Zotero or Mendeley. Those are some alternatives. Um, so a good thing to get up to speed with these um, at the outset, um, and they'll help you be more efficient with your, uh, with your research overall. So research questions can seem difficult to develop. Um, luckily, none of us has to come up with a perfect run right off. It's more like doing a rough draft and then improving it. And very much, uh, you know, yes, coming up with a research question is going to be a matter of drafting uh, research questions. So here's a summary of steps to take for developing a research question to help organize your thoughts. Step one, pick a topic or consider the one assigned to you. Step two, write a narrower or smaller topic that is related to the first. Step three, list some potential questions that could logically be asked in relation to that narrower topic. Step four, pick the question that you're most interested in. And step five, change that question you're interested in so that it's more focused.